of Top End Talk. Now, as you know, uh, Top End Talk is a local TV show highlighting the very, very best that Darwin has to offer. Now, we've had... Yeah, come on, that's worth a round of applause. Now, we've had some great talent over the last few weeks, and tonight is no exception. So don't remember to tell your friends uh, and like it on Facebook and share and like our page. And also, I uh, don't know if you mentioned, last week we talked about uh, looking for our new TikTok star. So we're still looking for someone to help us launch our page. If you are a celebrity, a musician, or just create some crazy content, remember to keep sending us all that information right here at Top End Talk on our Facebook page. All right, so uh, we have an exciting lineup of guests, as always. Uh, so let's welcome our guests tonight. Let's get on with the show. Put your hands together and please welcome our first guest tonight, Darwin's Maiden of Melody. It's Melanie Gray. <laughs> Legend of the world, Matt Hoffman. <laughs> and social influencer and content creator, Josh Griffin. <laughs> so some great talent for tonight's show. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get underway with our first uh, interview. And please, uh, once again, put your hands together and welcome Miss Melanie Gray. Hi. Hi, Sonny. Hey, Mel. It's great to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, fantastic. How have you been? It's been a bit crazy the last couple of months. So you're all flat out now. What's happening around It has town? been very crazy. Oh, yes. Gigs are starting to slide back into gear and lots of things happening behind the scenes. So... It's been, a, it's been one of those funny times where it's good to have had some downtime to work on a few things, but also it's sort of like dying to be back on the stage. <laughs> I think we all are. So yeah. I feel like so. You're on school holidays. Why are you on school holidays? I'm on school holidays. I teach music. I oh. get to teach music to okay. beautiful kids and, and parents. And I, yeah, it's one of my favourite jobs actually is sharing that. <laughs> so, well, then how did you get started in music or? You know, did you want to be a teacher or did you always want to be famous and be a singer up there on stage? Or? I've always wanted to be both, I think. My dad's been a teacher, so I think growing up with having a teacher dad, I was teaching my brother when he was a kid. Was he <laughs> a music teacher as well? My dad, no, he was always head of um, different um, situations in high schools or he was always head of middle schools or high schools and things like that. And so being a very little kid, as soon as I was at kindergarten, I'd come home and I'd teach my younger brother his ABCs. And so I always always had that teacher thing in there, but I've always been dancing and singing and performing since I was, since I could walk pretty much. <laughs> and why singing that? Does it make you feel special when you get up there and sing a song? I think or what, it, what attracted I think you just, in the first place? It just, um, it fuels your soul. I think music is the language that transcends across any any community every race every culture and it's the one language that you don't need words for well how about uh, you guys Matt and Josh are you musically talented anyway uh, not really no <laughs> I, used to, I, used to, I used to do a bit of I used to do a bit of hip-hop when I was young and write my own songs and stuff like that we actually created um, our own home studio did the whole the whole sound do you still booth perform some hip-hop no oh, it's no, a shame no. we <laughs> That was many years ago now, so... No collaboration. Drop, drop the mic and... Um, I can do karaoke. You do karaoke. <laughs> What's your favourite karaoke song? Um, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> so, well, don't, don't you hate people who sing karaoke? No, they all think one. they can sing. So, anyway, well... And, well, you've got to obviously into the music from an early age. Uh, what type of music kind of inspired you or... Gave you the thought, oh, I want to play music, I want to be like this person. Or... It's funny, I've had, being a cover singer especially, I've just had so many different genres and artists influencing me all throughout my career. I, when I was doing dancing, when I was a very little kid, it was all R&B and Janet Jackson and all this stuff. But then growing up, I have a family that we very much love the outdoors and we'd always be exploring Australia. And so suddenly this world of country music came into play and hearing some of my favourite songwriters sing about the history and the places and the people right as I'm seeing and experiencing these amazing, historic, beautiful landscapes and people and the history of our country. You're hearing the music, you're seeing it, and there was something about that that tends to tug at your heartstrings just a little bit deeper than, than all the other... Well, that's interesting. Like, your, your inspiration for you... We have actually a bit of a photo we're going to show of you... Uh a nice little promo shot for you. <laughs> there you go. Oh, look oh. at that. That's beautiful. <laughs> well, I mean, well, what kind of, I mean, do you write your own music? What kind yeah. of music do you play? Yeah, so I was pretty blessed. I went and studied music in New South Wales and I had an opportunity Hold to Hold on, I'm just in New South Wales at the Tamworth Country... Yes. Uh, <laughs> 
Is it, what is it? Uh, Tamworth Country Music. Country Festival. Music Festival. Yeah, but also, yeah. did you go to school down there and, and do some music I down did. there? I did. Well, I was a part of the academy. So I um, joined the Academy of Country Music just for, a, they do like a two-week intensive course. So cool. you get to go there. It's pretty much meeting all the big names in the industry and being mentored by them for two weeks. And you're writing songs, you're, you're learning a lot of business side of the scene, also just your fundamentals of how to write a chord chart for a professional musician. and there was, But also you're just mingling and, and networking with all, all the people that share your passion and your love in, this, in the scene. And since then, it's just, it's a community that is a bit like a family and we really embrace each other and there's been a lot of good things come out of it. Well, that's actually something I want to ask. Is that why is Tamworth the home of country music in Australia? <laughs> it is for 10 days. <laughs> just for 10 days? Uh, yeah, is yeah. Is country music big in Australia? It is really big in Australia. It, it's, um, I think because country music is, is the voice of the people that live on the land and I think it, it's one of the biggest voices we have in this country. And this is your inspiration to you, you always take your kind of inspiration from the landscapes and the Absolutely. people. Absolutely. Yeah, it's the and things that we Is it just the Northern Territory or the whole of Australia? Well, I've, drew, I've had a lot of adventures around Australia. We're very outdoorsy. We're always in our four-wheel drives finding new places to visit, new outback, very awesome. remote so troops. Cool. But the Territory is my biggest inspiration and of course we just have the most epic, unique, magnificent landscapes to promote and that is my edge as a country music singer and I'll, I'll own that 100%. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic, yeah. <laughs> well, you won first in the NT Country Song of the Year Awards with your song Our Own Backyard. Yeah. Uh, tell us a bit about the history of that. So I wrote, had a chance to write that song with the lovely Gina Jeffries, one of our A-listing wow. Oh, wow, Gina Jeffries. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So we've got some video we're going to play as we're talking along, but keep going, yeah? Yeah, so I had a chance to spend a couple of years on the Central Coast writing about an album's worth of songs with her, and she just really had a way of capturing my essence of what I wanted, of what I wanted to be singing and writing about and portraying as an artist. And Australia, I think we are so blessed to live in this amazing country. We have so many pockets from all Thank over the well. world. Take, take like, that the best place to be, and Australia. Yeah. yeah. All right. And so, and actually, the next one was Drive Slow. Drive so Slow. That yeah. was uh, it hit number one on the AM rap charts, and it yeah. also hits. Um, it also hits what, number four on the iTunes country yeah. charts. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, thank you. That was all because of everyone that rallied behind me and, and helped me pre-order it. And uh, it, the thing that I love the most about this industry and this scene is that it's very much a team effort. And I, I've never wanted, I always growing up wanted to just be someone in a band. So being the solo artist now in a world where it is all about the community behind you, it is all about the people behind you. And I get to be the face of that, but there's some amazing people that have backed me all the way. And so these results are, are not just my own efforts, they're a team effort. Well, you obviously, you're well known for doing some collaborations uh, with other musicians around town. Do you enjoy that mix of the different love styles? It. And love it, love it, love it. I've been a cover singer for about 13 years and so many different genres, pop, rock, bossa, jazz, R&B. So when I get to be Melanie Gray and promote the music that I love about our country and the top end, then that's, that's me and my element. But I also get a massive kick out of joining the other museums and stepping back into those familiar scenes as well. Ah, oh, fantastic. Well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> you're going to uh, come and play a bit of a song with us later yes. with another Ooh. musician, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what are you going to play for us? I'm going to guest muso tonight? My guest muso is the, no, the one and only Aaron McLucas. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. you'll see him. You do see him picking around the Mitchell Street scene and we've been doing um, gigs together for about two years now. Uh, but I'm going to do Calling Me Home, which is the first song I ever released as an artist, and it is about the top end, and it's five years old in August. Awesome. Well, well done. <laughs> now, just one more thing before you go. You're always wearing a hat. Why are you always know, wearing a hat? I have to ask the question. Baby. Every shot, everything. Like, this is my baby. You, you don't have a no. bald spot or anything? Yeah. No, it's a, it's a, <laughs> a lady never reveals her secrets to me. Okay, cool. Well, then, I'll, <laughs> then I'll never look under your hat. <laughs> 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 well, tell what, I'm looking really forward to that uh, a little bit later. Calling me home, it's going to be yourself and Aramit Lucas. Uh, if people want to get hold of you uh, or book you for another event, what's the best yeah. way to get hold of you? you? So I'm all over social media. You can look me up at melaniegrayaustralia.com as well. But Melanie Gray Australia, um, Facebook, Instagram, website, Spotify, or all of the all of the ones that everywhere. Well, <laughs> fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. Please put your hands here tonight, Darwin Muso. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.
All right, now put your hands together. Thank you very much. We are going to take a quick break, but coming up next is Discovery Channel's very own Matt Hoffman. So stick around, you're watching Top End Talk. Everything Top End. <laughs> This is the one. This will be massive. J Furnishing Superstore Warehouse Sale. Great discounts on current floor stock. Huge savings on transport damaged, shop soiled, discontinued and excess stock. Sale on now. Hurry only while stocks last. J Furnishing Superstore. They say the television is the new radio and the mobile phone is the new television. They say a picture paints a thousand words. Well, video at iProperty NT paints 1.8 million. The world of online video has changed. talk please put your hands together one more time for our next special guest tonight discovery channel's matt hoffman nice being here Toddy. thank you yeah we've actually never met before so well yeah. we might have run into each other somewhere but probably probably on a night out but we don't remember now we don't yeah. remember too much <laughs> <laughs> well i was just talking outside actually a moment ago you you're new to down or you came to down in 2012 where were you Correct. before that uh, before that i was traveling around the world for about three years and then before that i was living in adelaide Okay, and what yep. brought you to the Territory? Um, basically went away single, came back married, and <laughs> as, as you do... No, no. Where did you go single? Where did you go away? Not well, well no, when, when I went away travelling, I was single. Oh, okay. And when so I came back, I got married in Poland. Okay, okay. And came back you to... Got married in Poland? Yeah, yeah, Poland, yeah. Is she Polish? She's Ukrainian, but she was a Polish resident. Yeah. Cool. No, yeah. That's fine. So it was a bit of a random experience, because to, to get married in Poland, we had to go through the court process, and we had to... It would have a translator and it was all sorts of weirdness, but that's that's what I like about life, mate, is, is, the, is something different, you know? Do you speak any Polish? I do, a little bit. Cool, let's save it for next week, so don't yeah. worry about that. <laughs> 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 my my, fa my favourite sen sentence was, Suprosin you move po school. And that was simply, sorry I don't speak Polish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, what did you do for a job when you first came to Darwin then? Uh, when I first came to Darwin, I worked at Pass Bailey for about four and a half years. I worked on the boats and for me that was instrumental, especially with my career at the moment because I was around whales, dolphins, you know, all sorts of wildlife landscapes. It was just, that was the perfect place to breed what I love doing. So. Awesome. And were you just working on the farm or were you diving or collecting? Or what, no, I was, what work, I was working on the farm, so I was uh, chipping the shell. Not, a, not the greatest job in the world, but, um, you know, it gave, it gave me the finances and the stability to bring my wife over at the time. So it kind of it set us up. Oh, nice one. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And so how do you come from Pearl Farm at Fats Valley Pearls to a uh, photographer for the Discovery Channel? Um, that was a journey in itself. So for the last four years, I've basically been a hermit and I've dedicated my whole time and my life towards building my business and also trying to make the dreams become possible and build my own reality. And that was basically before when I first started my business, instead of going out and doing what every other videographer or photographer does, looking for either weddings or corporate or functions and stuff like that, I thought for the first six months, I'll go out and I'll make adventure, film, adventure films. And when I did that, I was, I didn't copy, like, I looked, I researched Discovery and National Geographic, Geographic of how they're putting their films together. And I was like, okay, well, I can mimic a, that style, but have my own style to it. And then when I made the videos, I did the Facebook marketing, researched where the biggest production companies were in the world, dropped that pin down, smashed it down, expanded it out by 50 miles, hoping they might see it. And that's exactly what happened. They saw the video. And they picked us up. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. But well, we're going to pick a bit of a, 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 a action photo of you uh, happening on the screen right now, which is uh -oh. going to be. Oh yeah. Oh, there you go. That's awesome. That's up a little helicopter. Yeah. Stuff. So no. Is he getting started in the whole video thing? Where was this shot? That was uh, shot for a real estate gig. I was just doing real oh, estate right. photos for all over Darwin, and um, that was a From really a helicopter. Good one. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was. There was a. There was a point where we had to get a shot over Kualinga, and it had to be directly over the top. So. The helicopter pilot had to, because we couldn't, I couldn't lean over that much. But it was an open, open helicopter. He had to tip it over. That was the best part. Awesome. About it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and cool. Uh, so, what inspired you to get into the photography from past Bali Pearls? And was it the, the, the kind of the. Uh, the environment you're in with the diving and that kind of stuff. So you're seeing the whales and the birds. No, this the... this has started. This started. I mean, when I was probably ten or eight years old, I was begging my mum and dad to buy me a camera. 
and eventually they went to Singapore, came back with the cheapo, and I just went out and I started, the first thing I started filming was wildlife. Uh, we, were, we used to go down to the River Murray, I was filming the pelicans and all that sort of thing, and it never stopped, I just continued doing it. Well, what is your favourite subject to? Wildlife. Wildlife? Landscapes, and wildlife, yeah. Are you a bit of a storm chaser as well? Or? Storm chaser, for, yeah, it's not actually, yeah, storm chasing for me is like my ecstasy. <laughs> I just absolutely love it. Like, there's nothing, there's nothing more that I enjoy doing than chasing a storm. Awesome, we get some pretty good storms up here as well. So Mate, there's nowhere, else, there's nowhere else in the world where we get more strikes hitting the ground. Okay, so in 2008, you were picked up by a large agency after they saw your first video. Uh, I think we have a bit of a footage here, uh, which we're going to show right now. So it's up on the screen. Yep. Uh, so what happened there? So what was this all about? So this was the, this is the, the crop, the crop tees? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. crop tees. Yeah, yeah, so, um, the... Crop tees. So, yeah, yeah, crop tees, right actually. Stuff. So I, I Settle made... Settle down, Mel. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't the one that came up with... <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't the one that came up with that name, actually. Damo did. He's the, he's the brains behind that one. But, um, that was, you know, after me and Damo started meeting up and, and, and making these videos, that's when stuff sort of sort of coming together. And, and Demo's the, the host of the show and you're the photographer. Is that how it works? Or no, are you both, no or? We, we're both in front of the camera. We just okay. have a passion. I've, everything that I am right now, I've never had anybody teach me anything. I've taught myself everything along the way. Demo is literally the only person that I've been able to go out and have, um, like go out and plan shots, go out and film wildlife that has the same passion of what I'm doing. Otherwise, if I'm with my mates or my family and I'm saying, you know, hold on for this shot or frame this, they're like, oh, so how know, they're getting him bored. How did you, like, they just don't have the patience How did you guys, how did you and Damo get together? Um, we, Is we're, he a tour guide or? No, well, we, we, we knew each other when we were kids, but then that was sort of just, we just separated. And then I went on, uh, took my mate that came up from Adelaide on Spectacular Jumping Crocodiles a tour. And there he was being a tour guide and I was like, I remember you. Ah. So basically, um, I said, G'day, how you going? And that was the end of it because he was flat out. But every time the crop was jumping up, he was taking photos. I was like, oh, okay, he's into photography as well. Then I drove my mate down to Fog Dam. The car broke down. And coincidentally, if the car didn't break down, then I never would have run into Damo again. And then I ran into him again because he came down. And then that's how it all started. Oh, we put you up and took you home. It was, no, no, it wasn't. <laughs> I mean, it, like that. You know what? it wasn't that easy, you know? Like, <laughs> but hey, you're on the side of the road in Fog Dam. It sounds pretty easy to me. It sounds suspicious, um, I know. But the best thing about it, last year your show, Legend of the Wild, was picked up by Discovery Channel. Yeah. yeah. How awesome is that? So, yeah. uh, tell us a, a little bit about that. Uh, tell us I'll, what, I'll, what was the inspiration and how do you get started in that? Um, I, First of all, I just want to give a shout out to Damo at Wildman Adventures. Yeah, Damo, Wild yeah, Man Adventures. Wildman Adventures. Yeah. Damo. Without, you know, together we made this happen. Mm -hmm. we, we basically came up with a concept and a plan. Uh, when, a, when Discovery approached us, then the budget came. So then we can start really planning of how we want to, you know, inco incorporate what we do into it. And of course, Discovery has their say. They have their opinion of how they want things to be. Um, but we just came up with a concept that worked. Well, we actually have a bit of video of the show right now, so we're going to show you that on the screen. Okay. Everywhere we've gone so far, at least every 50 metres to 100 metres, we've seen a crocodile. Look at there, mate, looking pretty... Uh, yeah. So, so this is the first one you ever did. It's the Mary River Northern Territory. Yeah, that's the, one, that's the one that we got picked up from. Yep, so through that through that video, literally uh, started the whole process of going Discovery through... Discovery Sword, or actually did the production... Well, that, so yeah, so yeah, so we got picked up from a production company called Hit Plus Run Productions in America, and from that they researched all of the other work that we had done in the past three, four years or, or more, and um, they just they just rang us up and said, "Hey guys, okay, like, how do you, you want to do, do a show?" Uh, I was in Alice Springs within two and a half right. weeks. I had just to postpone all of my work to, uh, and all that, push it back, hit a cow on the way, drive seventeen hours straight, <laughs> had a had a. <laughs> Yeah, had a, had a Skype session uh, at six in the morning, two hours sleep. We planned all our plate locations out. Uh, the car broke down. We couldn't get to those lo those locations. So then we pretended in Alice Springs that you know you got the ravine there, and I was just you know camera angles trying to you know prove that Grand we're Canyon. in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> right? And uh, and and it worked, and we got signed. Well. What are, like, it's all about animals and... It's like about, yeah, so well, Legends of the Wild is about solving wildlife mysteries in remote locations and helping the local people solve these mysteries because one of the biggest problems is uh, when local people find the, you know, their, their livestock or their animals, or even there was in South America, uh, in Brazil, um, someone got killed by a giant anteater. And their first response is to kill 
the animal or what they, they think the animal is. Another thing is if there's a carcass of their, their livestock and there's an animal feeding on it, they th instantly think that that's the animal, but it's not always the oh, case. How big is a giant anteater? Giant anteater would be bigger than you and me. It's really? huge. Yeah, it's huge. It's four arm, it's four arms is like that. So the, the claws are like this. And what happened in Brazil, the, the claw went into his leg because he went around to take a, a pee. And he surprised it and, sh and startled it. And it, it stabbed him in the leg and it severed his artery. Well, yeah, I didn't. Sorry to bring it so that's dark, but you know, that's what happened. That's reality. So, yeah. That's right. So, we disappeared in the jungle for two weeks to try and find out what was going on. Awesome. So, uh, now you're also working, well, that show, uh, we've got a bit of footage we're going to show you right now as we mm -hmm. talk about this. But uh, So, you're on standby for season two. We're going to go, go ahead. Yeah, it's, test, it's testing times at the moment because of COVID 19. It's really difficult. We just don't know. We heard our uh, word from the actual crew that have been doing it for 15, 20 years, and they said it's probably not, they're not going to start working until 221. Now, because of obviously the pro protests and the riots, then, you know, the, the COVID 19 is going through the second wave. So, they're saying, you know, who knows? Well, if people at home want to get hold of you for photography or to get involved, uh, what's the best way they can do that? Uh, yeah, you can go to Instagram, YouTube or Facebook of MKH Visual Aspects. And it has, if put, I always say to my clients when I hand the business cards over, I don't try and explain what I do. Just go to, go to my social media sites and you can see exactly what I do. And when can I see Legends of the Wild on Discovery? Uh, you can see it Discovery, Discovery Go. Um, but it's in Australia, it's not the easiest way to see it. Um, <coughs> It's just, yeah, it's, it's around, but yeah, Foxtel, Discovery, and Discovery Go. Well, mate, it's absolutely fantastic having the show today. Pleasure Our being very here. own Legend of the Wild. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, put your hands together for Matt Hoffman. Cheers, guys. <laughs> thanks, sorry. All right, man, thanks, mate. Fan <laughs> stick around. Don't forget a fantastic live performance coming out very shortly from Melanie Gray and our special guest, Aaron McLucas. Stick around. We'll see you again right after this. This is the one. This will be massive. J Furnishing Superstore Warehouse Sale. Great discounts on current floor stock. Huge savings on transport damaged, shop soiled, discontinued and excess stock. Sale on now. Hurry only while stocks last. J Furnishing Superstore. They say the television is the new radio and the mobile phone is the new television. They say a picture paints a thousand words. Well, video at iProperty NT paints 1.8 million. The world of online video has changed. Please put your hands together and welcome our next special guest, social influencer and content creator, Mr. Josh Griffin. <laughs> hey Josh, again, love to meet you, mate. First time, awesome. Yep. Mate, how have you been the last couple of weeks? Um, pretty well considering um, COVID-19, but like basically getting more shoots again, which is, which is a good thing, and making more TikToks, content, well, we're going to talk about that. So you're, you're a social influencer. What does, what does being a social influencer mean? Uh, I wouldn't, I feel like I wouldn't call myself that, but I've been Great. blowing up lately um, just because of my photography. And I, back in um, September is when I first made my first TikTok and it, it blew up from there. So I decided to keep on making TikToks because I felt like obviously I had, um, well, talking about that, you just didn't just release a TikTok. You had 400,000 views on your first video. Yeah. Yeah. What were you doing, man? Like, um, it wasn't, was it porn? Was it? No. Um, <laughs> I, saw, I saw that um, other photographers were blowing up on TikTok back then. So I decided to do a shoot with um, a model called Izzy. And that's where it all started. Well, actually, so. we have a photo of Izzy right now. Yeah. Um, who is Izzy? Um, she's a, a she's a local mo model. Um, she's 16. Wow! But she's literally blowing up as well. So, like, we've been collaborating for almost probably more than half a year now. So, and how did the two of you guys meet then? Literally, um, I found literally if you ever if you're a new photographer and you need to find models. Just do like hashtag Instagram uh, Darwin Instagram model or whatever. 
and you can find models that way. Yeah, so well, I'm on that side as well, so don't worry about that. So you so literally cool. find them from hashtags. <laughs> you find, uh, and that's how and we. It's done. That's all right. I've, you know. That's how we found each other, and um, I got awesome behind-the-scenes shots of our first shoot together, which. Um, which really created the first TikTok. Well, actually, let's have a look at that. We've Sorry. got some video of that right now. This is a new performance. Uh, and this is the one that blew up to 400,000 yeah. likes. Fantastic. Uh, so, what did you start like? You found Billy, you thought, let's do a song. Or what, what's this about? Is she singing? Is she just being hot? Or what's she doing? Um, basically, I don't know. We both like just wanted to collaborate together and grow together. So. Is he your friend? No, no, no. no, no. no. <laughs> Sorry, uh, she's, she's definitely a friend. Um, oh, that's another great shot over there as well, just popped up there. So, a great friend. So, yeah. um, <laughs> since then, you've been kind of doing lots of different things. You yeah. were able to catch up with Mark uh, Rogers, who oh, is yeah. well known in the so, um, Yeah, making all these TikTok videos really helped um, my Instagram exposure, um, which is how I found Mark Rogers that way. And he saw my work and he needed an assistant on the Mortal Kombat um, movie for well, like 2021. The Mortal Kombat. Oh. Like a computer game, really? No, no, no. Yeah, well... Are you Ken? It was, it was filmed in yeah. Adelaide, so I just uh, flew down. I was like, yeah, I'm ready to assist you however you want. Well, so. what did you do on the film then? So, um, coffee... Basically, so he shoots all, like, the behind-the-scenes um, shots and also the poster work um, that will be coming out in 2021 when the movie comes out. Um, but, yeah, I learnt so much about lighting and how it all works. Because you always see, watch the movie and you never see all the huge lights they got all... Just it, like in the yeah, studio today. Yeah, yeah just like today. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I learnt so much from him. Um, he's a great um, mentor, I guess. So I was meant to do another movie shoot with him, but, like, Corona came. So I decided to keep on... Well, one of the other videos on TikTok yeah. hit 5.1 million oh, views. Yeah. That's huge. Give it a round of applause. That's a good round of applause. Uh, we're going to show you that now, but what what's, was that video all about? Um, Again, was it... It was another... Izzy? Um, yeah, it was another collaboration I did with Izzy. And um, basically, we just wanted to do like a glitter shoot um, because we were both like really inspired by glitter shots. So I decided to... Um, team up with her and Amy, and yeah, we basically made another What's TikTok. Five point one million views. That's pretty huge, right? Yeah, I think. Um, <laughs> is that the biggest like in Darwin, like in the NT? It must be. Maybe, <laughs> but yeah, um, it is. I, guess it has I feel to be like the biggest in the NT. I feel like a lot. Of it blew up because people were triggered by all the glitter in her hair and it was never going to come out. But <laughs> <laughs> obviously, it's going to come out. But we've all been to strippers. It always comes out. Sure. No, no, no. I'm serious. Like. Anything on TikTok. <laughs> I know it sounds bad, but if, if you have something to talk about on there, that's that's a good starting point. So like even if it could be a bit bad, but it's all well, it, work, it's, it's exactly. my work. Okay. Well five point one million viewers, I'm sure you like that. No it, and no. It's it's amazing. It is yeah. fantastic. It's not easy yeah. to achieve that. No. Regardless of what you do. And not only that, you've got, like, from all this great work, you've built yourself quite a following on Instagram. You've got 10,000 followers on Instagram. That's pretty huge as well, yeah? yeah? I hit that a few, actually, last week, which was pretty cool. How did you get it? I, I got it last week. Just just last week? Yeah. 10,000 people. Is there, yeah. like, responsibility, like, that comes, like, I'm influencing oh, these people? I feel it's more like if I go out in the club, I'm going to bump into someone, and they're always like, I love your photos. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always like, I'll follow you back. But... Believe it or not, uh, I get the same thing all the time as well. But we do actually have some great photos <laughs> of you. <laughs> Here you go. This, this is a nice. This photo. is one of my first ones. This is so my first one. Just hold it's a little. cute. I guess it's cute. Now, look. Were you ever male modelling or? Uh, into it? Is this what, what this is all about? Like sometimes you? I go in front of the camera, but I mostly prefer being behind the camera. But not a Calvin Klein underwear commercial mm, coming soon. For you not yet. Like but I, I actually have. Um, <laughs> we might do one right after this. No, that's all right. <laughs> Um, and so, well, with all these followers and all your exposure, mm. what do you want to do next? What's next mm. for you, Josh, as a creator and performer and a photographer? Yeah. Um, yeah, so my end goal, well, not end goal, but, like, one of my goals is to eventually finish my website and sell, like, Lightroom presets where people can buy and, 
and put them on their photos and also maybe eventually like merchandise, like some, because when, when I'm on, on shoots, I normally say a lot of stuff, like one of my catchphrases is it's a vibe. So I want to like, I want to make a merchandise saying it's a vibe or something. And um, that might be the logo. That'd be like eventually, a that's yeah. a vibe. I like that. So that's pretty cool. And then just like little pins and I could just like, just because um, definitely everything's going more online now. So definitely well, we have another China. great photo of you actually from another of your biopics. But uh, how can people see some of your work? Do they log into TikTok or check out your Facebook uh, page, your Instagram or? Yeah, yeah. Oh, can I yeah. be 10,001? You just, yeah, it's literally just my Instagram, Joshua Griffin, or TikTok. Joshua, Joshua Griffin? Griffin. I'm, not, I'm not on YouTube yet. Like, I've made an account, but it's not. Well, at the end of the show, mate, there, you'll have it all so sorted. So. I'll be there one day. Well, I tell you what, fantastic content, mate. And so we'd love to have some of your content perhaps on the show in the next few weeks. So let's hit him up about that. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our guest tonight. Fantastic, Josh Griffin. <laughs> mate, great to have you here. Hope you enjoy yeah. it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, stick around. We still have our amazing performance coming up very, very shortly from Melanie Gray and our special guest, Aaron McLucas. Uh, so stick around. You're watching Top End Talk. Everything top end. This is the one. This will be massive. Jade Furnishing Superstore Warehouse Sale. Great discounts on current floor stock. Huge savings on transport damaged, shop soiled, discontinued and excess stock. Sale on now. Hurry only while stocks last. Jade Furnishing Superstore. They say the television is the new radio, and the mobile phone is the new television. They say a picture paints a thousand words, while video at iProperty NT paints 1.8 million. The world of online video has changed.
It's a whisper that sounds like my favorite song. It's the wind, it's the storm bird saying I've been gone too long. It's a shout, it's a whisper. It sounds like my favorite song. It's the wind, it's the storm bird saying I've been gone too long. It's from Mel and from Aaron. Great to have you on the show. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching tonight's show. Don't forget to like our page and share it with all your mates. Uh, like us on Facebook, like us on YouTube, and don't forget, we're still looking for our next big TikTok uh, contributor to, to create some content for us on the show. So keep sending your auditions into our Facebook page. Uh, now, also next week, another big show, 6.30 p.m. right here on Friday, Darwin's Diva of the Divine, Mr. Ben Gratz. Jim Junkie, Jez Johnson, and restaurant rivals, Darren Lynch and Pina Somerville. So don't forget, we'd love to have you back next again next week. This is Top End Talk, everything Top End, proudly brought to you by Jake Furniture. Thanks for watching. See you again next week. This is Top End Talk.